Hello, welcome to Health Plus, a healthy living and lifestyle program. My name is Pastor Anthony Osegale, and I'm your host on this program. Today, we will be discussing a very important topic, raising kids in a healthy and safe environment. There's so much more to parenthood, so much more to helping your children develop into the individuals that you want them to be in future, beyond, of course, just food and education and so on. In this program, you're going to be hearing all of that and more. Stay with us. When we get back from this break, you'll meet my guests. Welcome back. I have with me today on set, my extreme left, Pastor Dr. Olushola Okona. Thank you very much. And a registered dietitian nutritionist, Ms. Uchechi Precious Oku. Thank you very much, Pastor. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. All right, diving straight into the meat for the day, raising our kids in a healthy and safe environment. Pastor, talk to us. Thank you very much. First is to look at what is environment. Environment is the totality of what surrounds an individual. And that means the spiritual, the physical, the social, the economic are all inclusive. And so when you want to talk about a healthy and a safe environment, all these factors must be considered. So when we look at how do you go about it? First is to plan the kind of home the parents want the child to be raised. It cannot suddenly happen. If it suddenly happens, there will be so much problems along the line where the child is not able to either fit in properly or is wrongly raised. Then when we talk about healthy environment, we are looking at an environment that promotes the optimal health of the child. So these four areas I've mentioned must promote the optimal health of the child. So for example, under physical, we have living and non-living. Okay? So various things must be at the back of the mind of the parents. So what kind of house is it? If a house, for example, is tight, full of items, no space, that house will be dirty. There will be danger. Because there is either you are stumbling into something, something is falling down, the child is running into objects, and there is no freedom to express himself. He can even fall on the child. He can also fall on the child. So we begin to talk of the size of the house. Then we begin to talk about ventilation. So, a a house that is poorly ventilated will not be optimal for the growth of a child. Sickness, airborne diseases will spread more, okay? And that means there will be frequent reasons to go to the hospital simply because there is no good ventilation. So we'll look at that in that way. There is a biological environment. Some homes have deaths. Ahem. Some have pets that are harmful. Some have beneficial pets. So that's an environment. So that's a separate one. It's still part of the physical structure. Then you now talk about social environment. What kind of people are in the house? Their character, their attitude, their behavior. If you are raising a, house, a child in a house that is ungodly, the child will learn certain words, will see certain things. I'm going to practice what is improper right from childhood. And the first set of information that comes to an individual 
about anything are usually deeply ingrained in the consciousness of the person and of the child. So if there is violence in the house, there will be problems. If there is abuse, either sexual, physical, even watching people being abused. And even verbal abuse. Verbal abuse will cause a problem for the child. Then the child where there is not enough economic problems, because economic problem causes a lot of social disruption. It's not just in food. Social disruption, where a child does not feel he or she belongs where other children belong, and certain things that are even basic may be denied. So economic environment is there. And of course, the strongest one is the spiritual environment. Who are the parents? Who are they? They can be Christians who function like canal people. That means they go to church, but everything in that house is about tradition of men. It's about what people do outside the world. You know, so church is a nominal thing. It's just a, a tradition, it's something they do. A tradition they do. Mm, they just do. And so the child is not raised to be spiritually sound. And so what makes a man complete? Just like we say, health is a state of physical, social, psychological, and spiritual well-being. That, those four components, at the end of the day, are also going to impact on the environment a child grows. So it will determine whether the house is a house of love or is a house of hatred and bitterness. And then a child can be raised depending on the challenges the child has. A child may have a challenge in a particular area and is raised to be degraded. Oh, you don't know anything. Is that what your mates are doing? The child has a challenge. And then he's raised not to maximize his advantages, but he's raised to maximize the so-called disadvantages. Focus. And focus on those things. Meanwhile, another child can be having some form of challenge or disability and is raised with just a mindset that that child becomes a champion in spite of that disability. That's why a lot of what goes on in the social environment, the spiritual environment, physical environment, the economic well-being of the child will now determine whether the house is safe and healthy. The attitude of the parents to health, for example, every time the child has a challenge, go to the nearby chemist, go to the nearby this, go to the nearby that. And in the process, the child gets to fall sick often, landing in the hospital severally because of ill health. So a parent has to plan for all this in order to optimize your child, in order to optimize it, because environmental factors play so much role that they sometimes overwhelm genetic capabilities. So the environment can either enhance good genetic capabilities or suppress, or suppress them. Or suppress. Mm. So it's not enough just to have good genes. The environment is going to play a major role. If a home is not safe for a pregnant woman, how is the house going to be safe for the child that the woman is going to have? So the head of the home must plan for his house. So it, it means that um, for certain categories now, I'm going to categorize. Before you plan to bring a child into a home, the parents-to-be need to have thought about these things we're talking about. And this is why this program is so important, that you, know, you have the opportunity of watching and hearing all of this. They need to have planned exactly the, the structures in the home, how the entire setup is going to be organized, so that the child comes into a home that is actually safe and healthy. healthy yeah. And then if one is already, you already have children, and maybe the structure was not the way it's supposed to be, you have to start rearranging. You don't say, oh, it's too late, I'm here now. You have to do something and just rearrange. There's an aspect I'd like to bring in, and I'll, I'll bring you in here, uh, okay. Ms. Oku. Now, part of the environment, and that something that also contributes to the social interaction of yes. children, the issue of the house support staff that sometimes uh, we have uh, assisting. Now, um, the parents may need to vet, they need to be careful, they need to be setting, you know, uh, what kind of person is going to come in 
to be taking care of the children when they are away, maybe at work. And then sometimes leaving the kids to be trained and educated by their television. Of course. And the aspect of the helps or people that come into the home to help you take care of your children, maybe you're too busy or something. There's one thing you should instill in your child is to give your child the opportunity to talk to you. Most children grow up not being able to talk to their father. Hmm. They see their father as some, how do I put it, some a masquerade, some sort of yeah, some sort. One God, one God, God that you can't or even a say, tyrant. Oh, that is coming, everybody's <laughs> leaving the sitting room and everything. So you shouldn't create that kind of environment for your child. Let your child be able to tell you things that are going on. Because you, you can only hear of some kind of wrong things that you don't want happening in your house from that child. If that child is being abused, say, by the help or anybody else in the house, in or the even house. at school, mm. it's only that child that can tell you. And if that child doesn't tell you, so how do you, how are you sure about the environment that you're creating for that child? So one, you should let your child be able to relate to you. Talk to your child. Let him, let him or her have that confidence to tell you stuff, to tell you, okay, this is what happened in school today, this is what happened at home today, and everything. And then on the issue of television, Leaving your child to watch TV, especially of in these times that we're living in, it's not really regulated because even the cartoons or whatever that they watch, there are there are people. How do I how do I explain this? There are so many information that they they in a subtle way pass pass across. Yes, pass across to the child. Because some of them have yes. some of them have a, 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 a skewed agenda yeah, of certain agenda. things they are trying to um, gradually Inculcate get you to to child. acclimatize to and of see course. as normal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like for example, now the issue of um, this LGBTQ and everything. There are, so, there, are, there are some cartoons and some movies that you watch. Now, almost I heard the other day that the, um, um, any movie that is about that 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 they, they want to approve must have the uh, must have the um, LGBTQ factor in it. So they're trying to like normalize it. Hmm. And when the child is, is constantly watching this, every time you're like, ah, I don't have your time, you're disturbing me, go and watch TV or put on gem for them, let them watch TV. You are leaving you are you're leaving your responsibility as a parent because it's the sole responsibility of training that child is on you. Hmm. Your, the responsibility was given to you by God to train up that child in the way it should go. But now you're putting it in the hands of others that don't have a good motive for that child. So it changes the mindset of that child. And it's not Just hold that thought. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be going on a short break right now. And when we come back, we'll continue our discussion, raising your kids in a healthy and safe <laughs> environment. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Health Plus, and we are still discussing raising our kids in a healthy and safe environment. So, Ms. Oku, you were talking to us about leaving the kids uh, and the responsibility of parenthood to television, uh, and then maybe the parent is busy and the child is trying to come interact and talk with the parents and say, go, 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 go and watch. Go. Please put on cartoon for them, let them watch, or uh, get that tab, bring my tablet, uh, yeah, put something for them, let them be doing, so that we can just have our peace. And then the child is unsupervised, mm -hmm. and he can go into the internet, he can go into the television and so on. You, you were saying this is kind of like a danger. Yes, it's a very big danger because at that age, the child is building or developing subconsciously. Mm. The child might not even know. There are some things that the child sees that affect the child later in life. Mm. Like, like Pastor was saying, like abuse. Mm. When or, the child might not be necessarily directly 
abused, but he's seeing people being abused in the house. Maybe the father beats the mother every time. It creates some kind of um, um, thoughts or pictures mm. in the child's mind. And that child can grow up and manifest that, that um, character in any form. You know, uh, the, something that I find rather, very, very interesting, mm -hmm. and it's always very disturbing to me, Pastor, the use of words. Mm -hmm. Words are very powerful, very powerful. And um, abuse of words or yeah. misuse of words, I, I think, accounts for uh, the highest percentage of the crisis that we find among families today. The way we speak to the children and to one another. The choice of words that you use can either, as you were saying, strengthen the strengths and capabilities of the individual or completely destroy the confidence of that person to want to even attempt to thrive in any way. People use certain words. Are you stupid? You must be stupid. Are you mad? I mean, lots of nasty words to, to children. But I know that's not what the parent is trying to achieve. Yes. Maybe you're trying to correct. And instead of trying to speak the person into what you want the person to be, the, you, you're using words that kind of like lock that person up in the consciousness of that problem that he or she seems to, to have. Pastor, can you talk to us? Yes, thank you very much. You know, the issue of words, words determine the person. So the parents themselves are a conglomeration of words. Words they have heard, they have learned, and they have used. And it has also built a mental structure in them. A word like, life is not easy, is actually abusive to a child. Because you are putting something in that child that may not be right, based on your own personal experience as a parent. And that's where the spiritual state the kind of person the parents are spiritually, eventually we determine. Man is a spirit. So it matters who is influencing the parents. It matters who, what are they listening to, what are they hearing, that made them who they are. And then if they grown up wrong, did they recognize they've grown up wrong? So that they will use the word of God to help themselves. So that they can help their children. That is the key problem a parent may have. I have a child, my own perspective of life is that it's always going to be difficult and rough. No matter what you do. No matter what you do. There are forces out there that will not allow you to move at all. And then you will tell that child the same thing. It, it doesn't sound like you are stupid, something is wrong with you, but you are crippling a generation. And the child will listen to you and believe. And the child now needs to deal with that when the child grows up. What of if the child never heard it? There are delays in the life of that child that will not be there. So by the time you now come to negative words, in fact, there's a term in psychiatry, is what you call a child, the child will be. So if you say you don't know anything, the willingness to learn drops. Because he believes he doesn't know anything. You are not good enough. The willingness to be good drops. Eventually, what you are calling a reprimand becomes the story of the life of the child. So a parent must balance himself or herself. Like I always tell people, anybody can have a child. But not anybody can be a parent. Parenting is different. It doesn't take anything to have a child. It's a sperm meeting an egg. You can meet it deliberately, not wanted, it can be planned, it may be unplanned. And so the challenge we have with a lot of children all over the world is that they were brought in without any plan. There's even no plan where they want to deliver the child. So danger starts from pregnancy. And then the child is born, maybe injured, then everybody makes a mockery of the disability of the child. So we just see a consistent plan based on the problem the parents have. They just transmit all their challenges into the child. Some raise a child for revenge. Yeah, they've laughed at me so much that I didn't have a child on time. Now this child I've had, I'm going to so raise this child, he's going to deal with them. <laughs> now you've 
You've altered the purpose. The child is the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Now it has changed to your own heritage. There is a divine destiny yes. for that child. Well, change it now to your own personal plan. And this child is going to be raised as an assassin. He may not be carrying guns, but he's going to destroy everybody the mother or father do not like. Either with words, with action, with money. These things are vital. And that's why Pastor Chris says every child is your child. You should try to help children. You don't know the homes many of them are coming from. Many of them are not even coming from a home. Some are coming from the streets. They have a house, but the house is part of the streets. You know, that, that means the child has no, nothing to do in the house. It's constantly outside from morning till night. Because the parents also are constantly outside from morning till night, and they don't see anything wrong with it. Either because of their own mental state, their own social state, their own spiritual state, or all of them put together. So the child is going to most likely copy what the parents do. And so the parents must plan for the house or restructure back their house. And then because of that, the choice of words will now what? Change. And then they will have a different child who will have a different childhood from them. For example, a lady who grew up under an abusive father may likely have problems with her husband. Because your husband is like a father to you. And that's the man that she is with. So because she's having problems with the man, there will be a lot of quarrels. She will not know why the man cannot satisfy her. She needs the word of God now to recognize that the job of your husband is not to make you happy and joyful. God put joy inside you. A man cannot know everything you need. You got to give people room for what they cannot do. Because wrong expectation causes frustration. Now that lady is angry with her own husband, now start training up a child who's also going to have problem with her spouse. <laughs> Either a boy or a girl. So these things are very important. The word somebody hears affects the person for a lifetime and may be transmitted from generation to, to generation. generation. Okay, uh, I would like us to just quickly spend the next few minutes highlighting uh, this aspect. You made some comments earlier when you were talking about uh, allowing the children communicate with you, allow them talk to you. In practical terms, what can parents do to help their children become freer in discussing with them? Just some practical, practical steps. Let's just quickly, sure. yeah, what can they do? A very simple step, like doing things together with them. Mm -hmm. One. You can cook together with your children. Mm -hmm. Two, you can have prayer sessions and um, uh, morning your devotion. Devotions. You should have your devotion you every have day. With your child, with your family, yeah. And then you read the rhapsody of realities to them. You explain stuff to them and tell them, okay, what do you understand by this? From this, let gradually, talk. gradually, it builds up. It builds up. They can communicate to you and tell you, oh, mommy, this. Oh, does this mean? Okay, maybe in the rhapsody they said um, something. They talk. They talked about something about lying or mm -hmm. something. The child might be so inquisitive and say, ah, does it mean that if I tell you this and it's not true, am I doing something bad? You'd be like, yes. You, get, you explain to the child why it's bad from the word of God, mm. and then gradually it builds up that and, way. And so when the child comes asking questions, you should actually take the time to of answer. Course, yeah. Person, of parents should watch themselves to, to notice when the kids want to ask questions, questions, to actually provide the answers for them. If maybe at that particular time you really are so occupied with something and you told the child okay let's deal with this later the parent must remember to keep that promise to keep that promise and answer that question otherwise the child feels even if i ask once he says later he never gets back to to say anything so for example the man is the head of the house and you must make up your mind how that house is going to be yeah. and that means your first partner is your wife between the two of you, discussions about the children should be welcome. Some people don't say, no, 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 go and sort out the children. I don't have time for them. You take care of it. No, that's not from the man. Number two, you should be a playful father. If you want to raise children, you must know how to play. So if you're always like the lion of the tribe of the house, like Pastor Chris said, and everybody is campering when you show up, you are causing problems. Help them with the homework. Help them with the cooking. Help with the washing. When they see you, working with your wife, 
they learn to also relate with you. Because normally children are closer to their mother, naturally, much more than the father. But before you know what is going on, the child may even be freer with you. And then you and your wife speak with one voice. Don't raise a child against the other person. Don't raise. Once you don't do that, for example, why are you not going to be laughing in your house? There should be laughter. I mean, it's not a battlefield. Laughter do it good like medicine. Everybody should be jumping and skipping. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. When any of you show up in the house, there should be rejoicing. Of course. And most likely, that's what is going to even make you, the father, live long. Well, Pastor Doctor and Ms. Oku, we have come to the end of the segments that we are in right now. Uh, we will be continuing in another uh, segment. And so much to talk about, really so much to talk about in dealing with raising our kids in a healthy and safe environment. You don't want to miss our continuation. Remember, if you have questions, contributions, or comments that you'd like to make, our phone lines are there, the email address is there, and our various social media handles are on the screen. We'd like to hear from you, and uh, we'd like to take your questions as well. Until we meet again on this program, Health Plus, remember, stay healthy. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I welcome you especially to this message segment of what Health Plus today. I want to look at this verse of scripture to you, with you today in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We're talking about bringing our, up our children in the, in the right and healthy environment. What is the healthy environment? It is the environment of God's word. And the Bible says here that if we bring up a child, if we train up a child in the way it should go, what's the way a child should go? Is the way of God, the way that God has determined for that child to go. So when we bring up a child in the word of God, in the environment of the word of God, it says when he is old, he will not depart from that environment. The Bible talks about, and a good example of that, it talks in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, he said concerning Timothy, he said, you have known the Holy Scriptures from thy youth. You have known the Holy Scriptures from thy youth. And he said, the Scriptures are able to make you wise. So Timothy could live a kind of life that is excellent to God because he had known the Holy Scripture. And the Bible there tells us that he was brought up that way by his mom. So his mom brought him up in the environment of God's word. And that brought him to the life of excellence because the wisdom of God was functioning in his life. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a story in the Bible that, uh, when Jesus, a rich man came up to Jesus and said, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus said something to him. He told him, go follow all the commandments do what the word of god says follow the commandments and the man said this is what i have been doing for my youth praise the lord no wonder he was a rich man he prospered because he had been following the word of god from his youth his riches was not just as a result of being a good businessman because the word of god brought him up so that's the environment we should train our children. Bring up your child in the environment of God's word. Teach them to follow the word. From the early age, bring them up in the word. And the Bible says that when they are old, they will not depart from it because you would have programmed them for success and victory in life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you.